Okay, uh, just these two are asking us to use these functions. Everything else is asking about the 12 basic functions that are in the textbook. So the function whose domain consists of all non-negative real numbers. Uh, so can't have negative numbers. Um, can't have square roots of negative, so they all have to be real numbers. Um, this could have negative numbers. You can plug negative numbers into sign. You can plug negative numbers in here. You can plug negative numbers in here. So we're excluding all those. <clears throat> um, J only allows for non-negative numbers. In other words, positive numbers. Right? So I think J is the only one out of all these. Because you can plug negative numbers into every other one except for uh, function J. Because you can't take a square root of a negative or else it will be imaginary. Right? That's our answer for that one. And then this one says the function uh, that is not a continuous function. A continuous function is a function that you can trace with your finger and you never have to lift it. And it's continuous for all numbers in its domain. Okay? So the integer function uh, looks like this. Um, open circle, close dot, open circle, close dot. Oh, it's x plus 1. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so that's what this graph looks like. This is not continuous because you have to lift your finger to get from this dot up to this next part of the graph. Okay, uh, and some students would say, well, wait, what about H? Isn't that not continuous? Because if you graph H, it should look something like this, I believe. If you graph that in desmos.com slash calculator, this is what the graph H is. And if you trace this, you have to lift your finger to get to this next part. But for it to be continuous, it's for all numbers in its domain. This last part, x equals 0, 0 is not in the domain of this function, so we don't consider that for continuity. So that's kind of a tricky part. I won't put anything like that on a quiz or a test, because that's not a big deal. Okay, <clears throat> the next is referring to the 12 basic functions that are in the text in that video I made. The four functions that are bounded above. Um, how much have we done boundedness? I don't think we've done boundedness very much, so... The idea of being bounded above means you can go no higher than a certain y value, okay? Like uh, the logistic function that we see in our textbook. This is bounded above because, uh, like I said in that previous video, it gets no higher than 1 unless you mess with the logistic function. So that's an upper bound. So the logistic function is one of those four. Uh, I got the textbook open. Let's see what else. Oh, um, Sine, cosine. It sine is a, a wavy type of function like this. It's bounded above because you can get no higher than y equals 1. There's a ceiling to it. And same thing with cosine, right? Cosine is the same type of graph except it's just been shifted. Okay, so cosine is also bounded above. It can get no higher than 1. So that's three of them. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Fourth one. Do I not have them all? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No, that's all of them. The four functions that are bounded above. I've only got three. If there's only three, what the heck is he talking about? Uh, oh. It's asking about these examples over here. That makes it different. Okay, so this has an upper bound. It's 2 is the upper bound. Can't go higher than 2. Uh, this has an upper bound. Can't go higher than 1. Um, let's see. That does, that does. And this does. This is the logistic function, so that does have an upper bound. Go ahead and graph it in Desmos, and you'll see that it can't go higher than a certain y value. And then one of these has been altered from the original six trigonometric functions, and that's why it has an upper bound. Uh, let's see, which one's that going to be? Not that one, not that one. Not that one, not that one. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Square root, negative square root of x. I don't have Desmos open. But, uh, if you plug in 0, you get out 0. If you plug in 1, you get out negative 1. You plug in 4, you get out negative 2. Okay, so this is the other one. If you were to graph this in desmos.com slash calculator, by the way, you just type in 
SQR T to make a square root in that, in that graphing calculator. It has an upper bound because you can't get higher than this line right here. <clears throat> okay. Now the rest of these I know we're talking about the fixed trigonometric functions, not those 12 that they, uh, sorry, the tw not the six trigonometric, the, the 12 basic functions. So going back to the 12 basic functions, the six functions that are increasing on their entire domain. Um, so this is the y equals x function. And the way you can know that, the, the domain is all the x values, right? So every x value, uh, it's always increasing no matter where you, where you get it. Because the slope is a positive one. And a positive one means you're always increasing. So pick any two points, you'll always get a positive slope between them is what it's saying. Okay, so that one's always increasing. Um, look, y equals x squared is not always increasing. Because if you pick these two points over here, you get a negative slope between them, so it's decreasing, right? So you got to find a graph where it doesn't matter what points you pick, it's always increasing. Uh, going right down the list, how about x to the third graph that looks like this? Pick any two points in that, there will always be positive slopes. Even if you pick this one and then this one, if you calculate the slope between those two lines, it's, it's, the, it's the slope of the line that goes between them, right? That's a positive slope. So y equals x to the third is always positive, so it's always increasing. And by the same logic, y equals square root of x, because any points you pick on this graph, they're always going to have a positive slope. Uh, what else? The exponential function, y equals e to the x, that one's always increasing, constantly going up. Uh, the natural log, y equals natural log of x. Any two points you pick there are always increasing. Now wait, we need six. It's not the trig function, it's not the absolute value. Uh, the logistic growth function. y equals one over one plus e to the negative x. Any two points you pick on that graph will always have positive flows. Three functions with infinitely many. So local extrema means like a max or a min on some small interval, okay? The local extrema, let me show you a first example. Uh, x squared is the first one that comes up in that list of six of 12 uh, basic functions. This is a point of local extrema because it's the smallest value on some interval of x values. So only considering this wall, this point is, uh, is a minimum. So y equals x squared. Oh, wait. All right. Infinitely many local extrema. y equals x squared. Okay, that's a point of local extrema. But if we need an infinite amount of local extrema, um, that would be the sine and cosine functions. Those make a wavy function in desmos.com slash calculator, right? There's a point of extreme. There's a max. There's a max. There's a min. There's a min. So there's an infinite amount there. And by the same logic, y equals cosine of x. And then what else do we have? infinite amount of local extreme. I think the only one, the only other one would be the integer function. That one's kind of tricky. Uh, because um, the local extreme, of the, well, the, the local max and mins are the same there. So. Yeah, so that one's kind of tricky. Uh, the sine and cosine ones are definitely ones we, we want you to know, but the integer function looks like this. Uh, no, closed dot here, sorry, open dot there. Closed dot, open dot, closed dot, open dot. So that's the integer function. So this is like a local max, this is a local max, this is a local max, but they're also local minimum at the same time. So that's just kind of a weird one. I really have to worry about that. The big idea is knowing what a local extrema is, okay. be it a maximum or a minimum on some small interval. And the three functions are the range of all the real numbers. A range represents the y values that are possible. Okay, so all real numbers means that the range needs to point down. That uh, means the graph needs to point down and up. So the first one is y equals x. To have all real numbers in the range, you need to be able to dip all the way down to negative infinity and all the way up to positive infinity. You can hit every possible y value here, right? So that's a function with range of all real numbers. Uh, so that's one, y equals x to the third. Same thing because you can get all possible numbers for y values. 
Negative a billion is possible because this arrow keeps going. Positive a billion is possible. <clears throat> uh, what else? So not y equals x squared, the squaring function, because that's only positive numbers. Not the reciprocal function because you can't have x equals 0. Everything else is possible. Oh, sorry, you can't have y equals 0. Everything else is possible except y equals 0. So since it's not all real numbers, that one won't work. Oh, the other one is um, the logistic function. Uh, not logistic, sorry. Uh, uh, the logarithm function, the natural log of x, the natural log. Okay, because every possible y value can happen in this function. Negative a billion, fine, we can get that because it keeps going down. Positive a billion, yes, we can get that. One, two, any possible y value you can think of is going to happen on this graph because of the arrow. So those are the three functions with a range of all real numbers.